Having spent the last 10 years flying in and out of Puerto Rico, I've learned a lot of interesting facts about the place. It has a rich aviation background and I thought I would share some of the more interesting facts with you. Fun fact number one. The beach resort of Dorado Beach used to have its very own airport and even its own airline. Started by aviation pioneer Clara Livingston, the Dorado Beach Resort built its own runway and eventually even had its own airline known as Dorado Wings. Miss Livingston was only the 200th woman to receive her pilot's license in the United States and was a friend of the famous aviatrix Amelia Earhart. Factoid number two. El Yonque Mountain is one of the highest points in Puerto Rico. Located in the middle of the Puerto Rican rainforest, it has also claimed at least four aircraft, including a military C-119 transport in 1968, a print air commuter airliner in 1969, and two small private aircraft, one in 2002 and one in 2008. Factoid number three. At the airport on the Puerto Rican island of Yaquez, a bomb was found on a small commuter airliner piloted by the son of Puerto Rican separatist Juan Marie Brass. The bomb was found before the Vieques Airlink flight left the ground and no one was hurt in what was an apparent assassination attempt of Brass's son. Number four. In 1950, the only airstrike conducted by the United States Air Force on U.S. soil since the Second World War was done in the central village of Yayuya. It was during what was known as the Yayuya Uprising by Puerto Rican separatists. F-47 Thunderbolt fighters, and yes, I said F-47 Thunderbolt fighters, strafed the town in conjunction with the Puerto Rican Army National Guard artillery barrage to get the separatists to surrender. This mission, flown by the Puerto Rican Air National Guard, or the Prang, is the only time that the U.S. Air Force has attacked domestic soil since they attacked the Japanese military in the Aleutian Island chain during World War II. Number five, in 1981, another Puerto Rican separatist group snuck into the Puerto Rican Air National Guard facility at San Juan Airport and planted bombs on at least 10 parked aircraft. At least eight Puerto Rican Air National Guard A-7 attack aircraft were destroyed along with one non-operational F-104 Starfighter that was due to be placed on permanent static display. The estimated damage was in excess of $45 million and that was in 1981 making it the most expensive terrorist act to happen on U.S. soil until 9-11. Roosevelt Roads and Ramey Air Force Base were simply known as Rosie and Ramey. The two longest runways in Puerto Rico are on opposite ends of the island and both are former military bases. On the northwest corner of the island you have the former Ramey Air Force Base which is now the Aguadilla Airport and has a 12,000 foot runway. On the far eastern end of the island, near Fajardo, you have the former Roosevelt Roads Naval Air Station, which is also now a civilian airport. As a result, two of the least busy airports in Puerto Rico have the two biggest runways. Number seven, the Vieques effect. The island of Vieques, Puerto Rico, is located just to the east of the main island, Barrancan. For many years, Puerto Ricans, especially the residents of Vieques, wanted the Navy to quit using the eastern half of the island as a live fire bombing and gunnery range. In 1999, security guard was killed by a pair of stray bombs dropped off target by an F-18. As a result, by 2003, all live fire activities at the range had ceased. Number eight. Of the 16 total private and public airports in Puerto Rico, almost half have some form of scheduled service. Three of them, San Juan, Agadilla, and Ponce have jet service from major airlines. Smaller airports such as Isla Grande, Culebra, Vieques, and Mayaguez all have commuter airline service. This gives Puerto Rico one of the highest ratios of total airports with commercial air service in the United States. Factoid number nine. In a reference to our first point, Famous aviatrix Amelia Earhart and her navigator Fred Noonan stayed one night at the Dorado Beach Airport on their ill-fated around-the-world trip. They were guests of the previously mentioned Miss Clara Livingston. Miss Livingston was one of Amelia's last friends to see her alive. And finally, number 10. Since Puerto Rico is a territory and a commonwealth of the United States, you do not need a passport to visit nor return to the United States. You do not need to clear customs or immigration when you fly to or from Puerto Rico. 
this cannot be said for the nearby American Virgin Islands. When coming from the AVI, you do have to clear customs mainly for agricultural reasons, so keep that passport handy. Despite not needing to clear customs when returning to the United States from Puerto Rico, you are still allowed to buy duty-free at the airport when leaving Puerto Rico. This is the one place you can buy duty-free and not have to clear customs with it. You simply have to be leaving Puerto Rico. Well, I certainly hope you've enjoyed these little factoids about flying in Puerto Rico. And if you have any you would like to add, put them in the comments below.